So I love this quote too, Charlie Munger. You don't want to believe in luck, you want to believe in odds. I think this is one of the more important things that I want to tell you about. Because we live in a world where people believe more in possibilities than they believe in probabilities. As crazy as that sounds. What's possible? Okay, what's possible? I, I flew out of JFK to come here. Very possible my plane crashes. Very possible that I make it on the plane, but then the Uber driver gets into an accident and I get killed. Very possible that somebody decides they're gonna mug us when we're walking to dinner. Very possible that all these horrible things could happen to me. Well, people who think in terms of possibilities, what are they gonna do? They're never getting out of bed, right? It's just like the only good thing that could potentially happen to them is they could win the lottery. And as Fran Leibowitz loves to say, your chance of winning the lottery or not is the same whether you buy a ticket or not. Um, so, so that's the good thing. Everything else is bad, right? Remember the movie Dumb and Dumber? And Lloyd Christmas had the hots for um, the woman who he rescued. And, and he says to her very hopefully, you know, Mary, I just got to know. You just got to tell me, do I have a chance with you? Of course, she's happily married, can hardly wait to get back to her husband. And she goes, I don't think it's looking very good for you, Lloyd. And he goes, well, so, so, so give me the odds. Give me the odds. And Mary says, I'd say the best odds that you're going to see are one in a million. And Lloyd gets this huge smile on his face. And he goes, so you're telling me I got a chance? <laughs> No, you don't, Lloyd. You're not hooking up with Mary, and you're thinking about possibilities, not probabilities. Now, some real world examples. People who think in terms of possibilities, they freak out, right? It's the bottom of the financial crisis, and I'm going down to Washington to call on one of the smartest, most articulate advisors we'd worked with. He'd been a client for 10 years. I get there with the, my head of, uh, of uh, private client uh, services. We walk into his office. Literally, this is the door. We get here, one foot in. And he's like, stop right there. Stop. He's sitting at his desk. And so Ari and I look at each other and we're like, OK. <laughs> Are you scanning us for weapons? What's going on? Uh, and he goes, puts a hand up like this. O'Shaughnessy, I know what you're going to do. I know that you're going to show me all sorts of charts and graphs, and you're going to show me that thing I just saw on your website where you looked at the 50 worst 10-year periods back to 1871 and how in every one of them, the next three, five, seven, and 10 years were very, very positive. Talk about having the odds on your side. And I, I know, I know you're going to do this, and I don't care. I have to act right now on what's happening right now because you say it's a possibility, I say it's a probability, the US is going down. And I was like, well, thanks for keeping the meeting short. Good luck with uh, you know, your gold and your, your uh, cave um, stacked with uh, antibiotics and, and weapons. Uh, can I get the address of that just in case? Um, <laughs> Anyway, he went on to do very poorly, obviously, uh, because we published this piece in uh, March of 2009 saying a generational buying opportunity. I heard crickets, you know, and or you're crazy, you're a mad Irishman, et cetera. Um, and so uh, what we found was people understood what we were trying to tell them, but they just didn't want to listen to it. And, and this is endemic you know, across the spectrum. 